I thought my girlfriend was taking things slow to build our relationship, but found out she was hooking up with a random guy behind my back. She swore it didn't mean anything, but how do I move forward when I was never her first choice? Our one-year anniversary fell on a crisp Saturday evening, the kind that hinted at the transition from summer's ease to autumn's embrace. We decided to celebrate at home, where the surroundings felt most intimate and meaningful. I had spent the afternoon setting the scene in our small living room, arranging a handful of tea light candles across the mantelpiece, and ensuring the soft glow of the table lamp bathed the room in a warm, inviting light. Of a playlist of our favorite songs hummed quietly in the background, a subtle sound track to our evening. I had prepared a simple yet special dinner her favorite spaghetti carbonara with a side of garlic bread and a salad dressed lightly in balsamic vinegar and olive oil. The table was set for two with a small vase of fresh daisies between us. Their cheerful yellow center seemed to echo the hopeful spirit of our celebration. A chilled bottle of white wine stood ready. As she entered the room, her smile was the kind that stretched right into her eyes, lighting them up with a happiness that, until then, I was mirrored by my own. She was dressed casually, yet elegantly, a style that matched her effortless charm and the easy grace she carried herself with. I remember thinking how lucky I was, how this past year seemed both wonderfully long and startlingly brief because of how deeply we had connected. The significance of the evening wasn't just about marking a calendar event. It was about celebrating how far we had come and the future we often whispered about. We had planned to share more than just dinner. We had agreed that tonight would be the night to share secrets too. Not the petty confessions of daily life, but the deep hidden truths that one seldom shares. It felt right, marking our commitment and trust in each other, reinforcing our bond with honesty. As we settled into our seats and I poured the wine, the clink of the glasses was a toast to us. We talked and laughed through dinner, each moment easing us deeper into the comfort of our shared life. Yet beneath my cheerful exterior was a nod of anticipation about what I would share and what I might learn. Little did I know, the night would unfold in ways that would challenge every notion I had of our relationship. As we cleared the dishes and refilled our glasses, preparing to divulge our secrets, the weight of the moment settled between us filled with promise and the faint nagging edge of apprehension. We settled back into the couch, our wine glasses refilled, the room dimly lit with the soft glow of the candles I had arranged. The air felt heavier as the moment to share our secrets approached. She took a deep breath, her fingers nervously twisting the stem of her wine glass. The music seemed to fade into the background as she began to speak. I've never told anyone this, not because I wanted to keep it a secret, but because it's something I've struggled to come to terms with. She started, her voice steady, but her eyes not meeting mine. My relationship with my ex was profound more than just a first love. He was, in many ways, my great love. Her words hung in the air, heavy and unexpected. She continued, explaining how they had been together for over six years, how he was her first serious relationship and how deeply they had connected. He was my first everything, she admitted, a trace of sadness weaving through her words. And even though I was the one who ended it because he wouldn't commit further, it broke me in ways I can't fully explain. As she spoke, my heart sank with each revelation. The room felt smaller, as if the walls were inching closer with each word she uttered. I felt a mix of emotions, betrayal, hurt, confusion. It was a cocktail of feelings I wasn't prepared for. The idea that I might always be second to a ghost from her past was devastating. She told me how deeply she had spiraled after their breakup, losing her job, gaining weight, battling months of depression. It was a part of her life she had never shared in detail. Her vulnerability palpable as she laid her past bare before me. I'm telling you this because I want no secrets between us, she said, finally looking up at me. Her eyes were earnest, filled with a mix of fear and hope. I love you and I am happy with you. I don't regret breaking up with him, and I've never considered going back. But it's important you know that part of my heart holds a place for what I felt with him. Processing her words was like trying to navigate through a thick fog. My initial instinct was to shut down, to retreat inwardly. I felt like a placeholder, a second choice to a shadow I could neither compete with nor erase. The pain of that realization was sharp, and it clouded my ability to fully grasp the entirety of her confession. Despite the turmoil inside me, I could see her struggle. It was clear this confession wasn't easy for her either. She was sharing a deeply embedded scar, trusting me with the kind of honesty that could either deepen our connection or serve it completely. Her hands trembled slightly and she took occasional sips of her wine, perhaps in an attempt to steady herself. I don't want to be just a comfort following your heartbreak, I found myself saying, my voice quieter than I intended. How do you see us moving forward when you hold such a profound connection to your past? Her response was slow, thoughtful, 
I see us as an opportunity for something different, something new and possibly even deeper, she said. I am not asking you to be him or to compete with a memory. I'm asking you to be you, and that's who I love now. But despite her reassurances, the seed of doubt had been planted. The rest of the evening passed in a blur. We talked more, trying to navigate our feelings and understand where we stood. But as the candles burned lower, so did my hope that we could find our way back to the ease and joy that had defined the start of our evening. As she spoke of her past love with such intensity, I couldn't help but wonder if the depth of her feelings for him was something I would always long for, yet never truly experience with her. After her confession, the atmosphere shifted dramatically. The room still wore the remnants of our celebratory setup, but the mood had soured. We tried to salvage the evening, attempting to steer our conversation towards lighter topics, but the effort felt strained and hollow. Laughter, which earlier had bubbled up effortlessly, now seemed a rare and forced commodity. I kept stealing glances at her, trying to reconcile this new information with the person I thought I knew so well. She attempted to smile to make light of the heavy air between us, but her smiles didn't quite reach her eyes anymore. It was clear we were both performing playing our parts in a script that had suddenly become unfamiliar. Internally, I was a mess. Part of me wanted to scream, to ask why she hadn't told me sooner, or why she felt this was the right time to drop such a bombshell. Another part of me felt a profound sadness, a sense of loss for what might never be. Could I ever be enough? Could our relationship ever mean as much to her as her past had? These questions churned inside me a relentless tide of doubt and insecurity. The more I thought about it, the more it seemed like every moment we had shared was now under a different light tainted by the revelation that I might always be second to a ghost from her past. The confidence I had felt about us, about our future, began to crumble under the weight of my insecurities, and she admitted longing for what she had lost. As the evening wore on, the tension became almost palpable. We were physically close, sitting together on the couch, yet emotionally it felt like miles were growing between us. Finally, she broke the silence that had settled over us once again, I think maybe we should talk about this more, she suggested tentatively, her voice low. I don't want this to be something that comes between us. I nodded, the lump in my throat making it difficult to speak. Yes, we need to clear this up, I managed to say, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. I knew this conversation wasn't going to be easy, but it was necessary. If there was any hope of moving forward, we needed to face this head on. We decided to end the evening early agreeing that we needed some time to think independently, agreeing that we needed some time to think independently. The weight of her confession lingered as I retreated into my own thoughts, trying to digest the night's revelations. I found myself delving into the backstory of her relationship with her ex, trying to understand why it had left such a profound impact on her. They had met, during their late teens, a time when each first experience tends to carve a deep impression. Over six years, their lives had intertwined deeply, each milestone and challenge faced together solidifying their bond. He was her first love, her partner during formative years that shaped her into the woman she is today. They had shared dreams, friends, even a pet at one point, layers of shared life that aren't easily left behind. The relationship had been her entire world until she realized that they were stalled. Conversations about moving in together and future commitments were met with hesitation or vague promises. Her patience wore thin as years passed, her need for a more solid commitment unmet. Ultimately, she walked away, a decision that broke her heart and plunged her into months of depression. Despite the breakup, the depth of their connection made it difficult for her to fully let go emotionally, and her heart harbored a space reserved for him, a testament to their once profound closeness. Reflecting on this, I considered my own past experiences with love. Unlike her, my romantic history was a patchwork of shorter relationships, none lasting more than a year or two. I had loved, certainly, but the endings had always been mutual, the separations amicable and largely free of lingering regrets. I hadn't experienced the deep heartbreak she had, nor had I felt the weight of a past love hanging over my present in quite the same way. This difference in our experiences shaped how we viewed our current relationship. For me, our connection was a fresh start, a chance to build something lasting and wholly fulfilling without the shadows of deep past hurts. For her it was a step forward, but one taken with the silent acknowledgement of past depths not yet fully receded. This disparity in our romantic histories brought into sharp relief our differing views on love and commitment. Where I saw our relationship as a primary narrative, she might still be viewing it partly as a sequel to her past, a continuation where she was trying to find new happiness but hampered by old ghosts. I valued transparency, trust, and the joy of someone with whom I could share a future while she perhaps valued understanding and patience, knowing firsthand how long the shadow of a past love could linger. As I considered these contrasts, I realized how vital it was for us to align our perceptions of love and commitment 
if we were to continue together. This required not just understanding but a recalibration of expectations on both sides. She needed reassurance that I was in this for the long haul, willing to navigate the complexities of her emotional landscape. At the same time, I needed confirmation that she was genuinely invested in building something new with me, not just trying to replicate or mourn what she had lost. The challenge then was not merely in overcoming jealousy or insecurity, it was in building a bridge between our past to create a shared future. As we prepared for deeper discussions about our relationship, I knew these were issues we needed to address explicitly. The path forward would involve not just love, but a clear-eyed assessment of what each of us could offer the other, and whether that would be enough to sustain a deeper, lasting commitment. In the days following our intense discussion, I found myself in a state of deep introspection. Our conversation had opened Pandora's box of emotions and doubts, but also a path to possible resolution. The quiet moments I spent alone were filled with reflection on what I truly needed and valued in a relationship. My thoughts circled back to the concept of self-worth and what it meant in the context of our relationship. Did I feel valued? Did I believe she was fully committed to me emotionally, or would I always be competing with the shadow of her past? These questions gnawed at me, testing the fabric of my confidence and trust. I remembered the clarity and confidence with which she spoke of her commitment to me and our future. Yet, could I accept her past as just that past and believe in the genuineness of what we were building? The need for a partner who was not only physically present but also emotionally invested was paramount. I realized that my happiness hinged not just on being loved but on feeling like the primary emotional choice, not a fallback option, but on feeling like the primary emotional choice, not a fallback option. Throughout this period of reflection, I weighed the joy we had shared against the insecurity that now seemed ever-present. The balance was delicate. I found myself sketching out scenarios, continuing as we were, perhaps the shadows would eventually dissipate, or maybe they would deepen, becoming more stifling. The risk of the latter terrified me, but the potential of the former held a spark of hope. My decision needed to be rooted in more than just reactionary feelings to a painful revelation. It needed to come from a place of strength and self-respect. I acknowledged that her past shaped her, as mine did me. But I also recognized my need for a relationship where I felt like the unequivocal choice. Finally, after much deliberation, I realized that the foundation of our relationship was strong enough to merit moving forward, but with conditions. We needed continuous, open communication and a commitment to work through insecurities as they arose. Most importantly, I needed to see tangible evidence of her emotional commitment to me. I decided just to sit down with her again, express my feelings and the conditions under which I felt our relationship could continue to grow. I'm ready to move forward together, I'll say, but we both need to have our hands full. I need to feel like I'm your first choice now, not just an option choose safely. We talked and she said, first, I'm sorry, but I think we should end this relationship here. I can't love you the way I loved him. Every moment I, when I'm with you, I always remember the time that he and I spent. I fell into an unknown void. The future I had hoped for with her had collapsed. She left soon after he, her ex, came to take her away. I fell into contemplation. I felt like a thousand knives were stabbing into my heart. After she left, every day passed like a living hell. I tortured myself, I drank every night, cried every night, missed work, texted her every day. Her repeatedly for nearly a month, I decided to meet with her to resolve this matter. I called her and asked her to meet me on Saturday at the cafe Waffen go to together. And sitting across from each other, we exchanged not just thoughts, but the vulnerabilities of our hearts. I care about you deeply, I began, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. But I feel like our needs and where we are in our lives just aren't aligning the way they need to for this to work. She nodded, her expression solemn. Her eyes reflected a mix of sadness and understanding. I love you. And because of that, I want you to feel fulfilled and valued, not second best or filled with doubt about my feelings. It was a painful acknowledgement that while love was present, it wasn't sufficient to overcome all obstacles. I need more, I admitted. And I think you need someone who can fully appreciate the past you carry with you without feeling overshadowed by it. How we talked about how we would transition from being a couple to being individuals once again. It was clear that while our romantic relationship was ending, we both had a deep respect for each other that we hoped would continue in some form, even if just as distant friends who wish the best for one another. The finality of our decision began to sink in as we stood up to say goodbye. We embraced, a long, tight embrace that spoke volumes about the journey we had shared. It was an embrace of gratitude for the good times and the lessons learned, a silent promise to carry those memories with respect and not bitterness. But as we parted, the pain of the farewell was palpable, but there was also a sense of relief, relief that we were both free to find happiness that was more aligned with our emotional needs and future aspirations. Take care of yourself, she said, her voice soft but composed. 
You too, I replied, managing a small, sincere smile. I hope you find what you're looking for. As I walked away, the heavy burden of uncertainty had lifted somewhat. There was sadness, yes, but also a burgeoning sense of hope. The path ahead is now about healing, about rediscovering self-worth and the kind of love that could embrace all parts of who I was. The future was uncertain, but it held promise, the promise of new beginnings, of lessons learned being applied to new relationships, and most importantly, the promise of finding someone who could and would love fully and be loved fully in return. Each of us will walk our separate paths, but we will do so enriched by our time together and wiser for the experiences we had shared.